do your little announcement. This meeting is being recorded per Governor Lamont's Executive Order 7B. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the December 8, 2020 meeting of the Wethersfield Historic District Commission. For those of you who have not been here before, tonight's session is composed of two parts, the public hearing and the public meeting. In the public hearing, we each, at, each at, ask each applicant in turn to come forward and explain their application in detail. This will give us an opportunity to clarify what you are proposing to do and for you to ask us any questions. Also, commissioners may voice an opinion or suggestion based on their own feelings. However, a vote is not taken during the public meeting until the public meeting following the public hearing. In the public meeting, which is not open to public comment, we will deliberate your application and decide how to act on it. We may approve it, approve it with stipulations, table it for further consideration, or in rare cases, we may deny it. You are welcome to stay for the public meeting, but need not do so. The results of tonight's meeting will be available from the Weathersfield Building Office tomorrow at 860-721-2839, anytime after 9 a.m. Please be advised that the Historic District Commission approval does not preclude the need for any other required permits, such as zoning, inlands and wetlands, or building department. Please contact the building department to review any other permits that may be required before you begin your construction. With the, this, I will ask our clerk, Commissioner Lyons, to read the legal notice. Thank you. Legal notice, Town of Wethersfield Historic District Commission. The Wethersfield Historic District Commission will hold a virtual public hearing on Tuesday, December 8th, 2020 at 7.30 p.m. on the following application seeking certificates of appropriateness. Application 5087-20, Kathleen Carpino, seeking to install new Safeway Regency garage door and replace siding on garage with K-Can vinyl siding, sage color at 28 Middletown Ave. Application 5088-20, Gabriel Camaro, seeking to install 27 solar panels on rear roof of home at 461, 463 Middletown Avenue. Application 5089 20, Pamela Doyle seeking to install six foot cedar fence along South Property Line at 29 Harmon Place. Application 5090 20, Andrew Webb seeking to enclose existing wood fence with fencing to match and gate on both sides of home at 10 Fernwood Street. Application 5091 20, Lynn. Lanita Donahue seeking to install 29 solar panel panels on the rear roof of home at 89 Garden Street. Application 5092-20 Weathersfield Investment Center seeking to update existing sign on building with new company name at 265 Main Street. Application 5093-20 CJ Picard Corp seeking to construct second story addition on rear of home with siding to match existing and trim line new construction windows at 41 Harmon Place. If you wish to review the applications on file, you may request a copy by contacting HDC Comments at weatherfieldct.gov or by calling 860-721-2836. Live participation is available by audio format. Any resident interested in speaking on the application or wishing to listen to the meeting should email HDC Comments at weatherfieldct.gov or call 860-721-2836. 721-2836 by 6 p.m. on the night of the meeting to be sent a phone number for audio access. Please include your name, phone number, and address in the email. Town of Wethersfield Historic District Commission, Kim Wolf, duly authorized, dated at Wethersfield, Connecticut, this 20th day of November, 2020. Okay, without further ado, we'll jump right in to application 5087, Kathleen Carpino, 28 Middletown Avenue. Oh, you're on mute, ma'am. You need to um, unmute yourself. If you drag your cursor to the lower left-hand corner of your screen, a little box should pop up with the microphone. And if you just tap on it, it should take off your mute. I've unmuted her, so she should be able to do it. Bottom left. (laughs) 
It is hard to see sometimes. It doesn't always pop up nicely. I've done it too. All right, why don't we, while they work on that, why don't we jump to the next application? I got it. Oh, you got it, great. Good job. All right. <laughs> Welcome. Um, um, just, I'm not getting garage doors. Um, I just got the door opener because my garage doors were okay, according to Douglas afterwards. So we're just talking about my siding, I assume. Yes, if you don't, if the doors are not an issue for you anymore, we'll no. just address the siding. Okay. And the, the siding is already up, is that correct? And everything is complete, yes. Okay. And I think everyone's probably had a chance to drive by and look at it. Um, you do you do not have any plans to side your house, is that correct? Well, not at this time. I don't have the money. The only reason why we did the garage is because you can't get asbestos siding anymore, and I won't want that anyhow. Okay. You know, so. Um, and the storm fell on your garage. Right. To be clear, you had storm damage, and that's what prompted the repair work. Correct. Yeah, a, Correct. Tree, a tree fell on the roof. Okay. Okay. Does anyone have any additional questions for the applicant about the work that's been done or the material that was submitted? No? Okay. All right. Thank you very much for coming, and thank you for putting the application in. Thank, thank you so you. much for your help, Kim. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We're going to move to application. Uh, does it, anyone from the public wish to speak in favor or against this application? <laughs> Hearing none, we're going to move to application 5088, Gabriel Caminero, seeking on uh, 461 to 463 Middletown Avenue. Do we have someone here for that application? Tim, were they see any familiar names? Um, maybe skip them. Is it is it the one at the bottom? Uh, have a comp uh, mark? No. No. So nobody's pictures popping up. If you if you, if it's you and you're trying to speak to us on it. Um, the only one I see is Brian Shea. Is that a different one? That's a different one. Okay. All right, we're gonna move on to the next. If you are here for um, the Middletown Avenue project, if you would put your picture up and at least wave to us, if we're not hearing you, that would be helpful. Um, usually we get someone from Trinity Solar coming for those to answer the technical questions, but I don't see anybody on that. All right, we're going to pass that and we'll go back to it at the end. Application 5089, Pamela Doyle on 29 Harmon Place. Hi, Hi. Can, you, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, great. Hi, I'm all, I'm all new to this, so. <laughs> That's okay. So you're looking for a fence and it is, let me make sure I get, we have two fences. It's pretty limited just down the stretch in between you and your neighbor's house. And it's the uh, a picket top fence, panel fence that the picture's not very good in our packet. So I just want to make oh. sure you know what you yeah. want. Yeah, um, it's, a, it's a cedar part um, privacy and then the spindles on the top. Great. Okay. They have to do all cedar, I think, right? Or all wood. We, um, not necessarily. We like the wood a lot. We like what you've picked out. So if that's what you yep. um, are interested in. I think that that's something that we have approved in the past. So okay. does anyone have any questions for this applicant? There's no gate have... in this. There's no gate. No, no. Just straight fencing. Okay, thank no. you. On one side, yeah. Perfect, great. Thanks so much for the application and for giving us a plot plan. We appreciate that. Okay, thank can you. I... Jen, can I ask a quick question? Of course. Sure. Uh, the way that the line is drawn, is that approximating um, what you're trying to accomplish, which is maybe to put the fence from the rear corner of your neighbor's 
property straight back from there relatively i mean is it going to be a straight line i assume yes it's going to be a straight line and um not go toward the front of the house it's going to end about uh 10 feet from the back of the house okay and it's is it going to kind of favor uh, the property line or your house it's going it's going to be on the what do you mean favor the property line meaning it's going to be closer to the property line than it is to the house i'm yes. assuming yep. okay because it looks like that's your intention from the drawing, um, but I just wanted to make the record. So uh, thank you very much. Okay, it thank you. Like a nice fence. Yeah, thanks. Thank you very much for coming in. Um, generally, we have you put the good side facing your neighbor, and if there's any um, hardware or whatever facing you, but this is the panel fence that's the same on both sides, right? Yes, yeah. And I did want to talk to the owner, but um, I guess it's a rental next to me, so I haven't been able to talk to the owner, but I did talk to the residents that live there and they were fine with it. Okay, great. Thanks so much for coming in. Okay. Thank you. Uh, we'll move on to application 5090-10 Fernwood. Oh, I apologize. Um, I did not ask anyone wishing to speak in favor or against 29 Harmon Place fence. Hearing none, 10 Fernwood. Is there someone here for that today? Yeah, hi. Uh, Andrew and Megan are here. Can I start the oh, video? Yeah, go ahead. Please do. Yeah. Okay. No. Sure. So tell us about your application. So uh, we're just looking to enclose an existing fence um, around the, to connect it to the uh, to where it connects in the fr in the front of the house. Um, so that we can have a, an enclosed area for our dog to run around in the backyard. Um, there will be a gate on each side, um, one on the driveway side, and then one on the, the other side of the, the property. So. I'm going to ask you the question Vasek usually asks, which is, um, do you want one of those gates to be a double gate so that you have something wider than four feet should you need to get some sort of equipment or a bigger lawnmower into your backyard? No, I think if we if we do end up getting a lawnmower, it'll just be a small push one. So we'll be good with a single uh, door gate. Um, we just always try to ask in case people aren't thinking ahead about, you yeah. know, if you wanted to put a patio in or a deck and you needed to get yeah. equipment in or take a tree we, down. We, thought, we thought about it, but we just didn't like the appearance of the double gate. We just thought okay. it would be simpler and look nicer for us if it was just one gate. Sure. Yep. That's completely within your prerogative. The other question I had, um, and I'll have to confess that your property was the one I did not get to before the sun went down tonight. <laughs> on, the, <laughs> on, on the run on the left side, down the side of the yard, is there mm -hmm. a step down in the ladder, in the fence? There is. So we're going to have that part taken out. So it's all the same height. Um, all the way around, yep. Perfect, okay. Does anyone else have any questions? Uh, the only question I have is the question on back going back to the gate and the gate is gonna be basically a continuation of the fence? Correct, yep, okay. it will all be the same. If you're it's not gonna look different. Correct, it okay. will all be the same, cool. same, same color, mm -hmm. yep. Great. Okay, anybody else? good on this one perfect thanks so much for coming in i appreciate it and i appreciate the application having everything we need sure thank you thanks any members of the public wishing to speak in favor or against this application at 10 fernwood hearing none we'll move on to 5091 at 89 garden street the solar project yes do you hear me can you hear me Yes. Hi, nice to meet you. Thank you for the invite. Um, I know you guys have the application. I'm in the office, so please <laughs> disregard the back. <laughs> Is everybody gone? Um, so yeah, we're putting the solar panels, but they're going mostly in the back. So I don't see like anything that's going in the 
front of the house, just like so on the garage. That is yeah. actually my first question because yeah. the application says on the back of the house, but then the documentation that's submitted in support of mm -hmm. has solar panel panels on the front side facing the street of the garage. And right. So that is not the back of the house. That would be the front facade of the house. Well, right. Actually, Jen, if it's they actually in the side. Yeah, it's not like on the garden. Seat. Sorry, sorry, I didn't okay. want to interrupt. I'm sorry. It, it is facing a public way, though. Correct. Which is Old Smitty Lane right there. Yeah, I understand. Technically, I guess the address is garden, even though the main entrance yeah. is. Is from that. Old Simsbury Lane. Yes. Correct. Okay. Okay. And then um, I think, I hope, so six panels mm -hmm. are on the front facade or the yep. uh, road side. It shows uh, 10 on the diagram, Jen. Driveways, yeah. And, yeah. Then, and then 23 panels are on the back side, which yes. are still visible from Garden Street. Is that correct? Uh, not necessarily because it's a big yes. house though, right? They, they are, they're not blocked they're because still, the house okay. is parallel. And okay. so coming down the street from Garden, they're um, fully visible actually. And okay. where are the mechanicals being proposed to be put for this? Um, well, we have to put the inverter next to the uh, meter because of the safety sh issues, but that's the only one. Um, well, the utility service, the AC disconnect, the inverter, everything has to go there because of the, um, the fire marshals require that. Uh, in case of any fire, they want to make sure they disconnect that. So also a utility requirement for us. So tell us about the inverter. You should you showed a photograph of it or yeah. a drawing of it. Mm -hmm. How big is it? There were no dimensions submitted. Um, they're not super big. They're like um, normal size. You don't really, but I don't have them here right now, I, but yeah, but um, I actually noticed that where the meter is, um, there is a bush over there, I think, that's kind of covered where the meter is. Honestly, like, the, we try to put them in the garages, like, or in the basement, just to hide them, just so they don't, besides the disconnect, that is only one part. But it depends on this one, unfortunately, because if we can't run the conduit inside and it's farther, then we will have to put it next to the meter. So there is a there is a possibility of putting it in the basement. Well, um, it could be, but like I said, it depends on. I, I don't have my electrician now, so he would be the one to give you the answers for that. But um, but yes, we try to hide them. But like I said, if we could, we would do that. The only little one that's be next to it, like I said, is the AC disc like the disconnect for the um, fire marshals, which is like the same size as the meter. I'm pretty sure about that because I've seen it. So, yeah. How are the conduits getting from the back side of the house where the panels are to the front side of the house where you're proposing the mechanicals to go? Um, the, the when we run the conduits, usually we uh, run them uh, underneath, underground, like uh, usually not visible for the for the public, like not visible. We can't make a decision based on usually. Do you have any material that tells you where they're you being proposed it. to run? Um, right now, no, because like I said, it's uh, also subject to when they go on the job site how they're gonna, like, I, I feel like the electricians should be the one that decides that. Because it has to be up to code with the electrical and building code at the same time. And right. um, yeah. Those are answers that's... we usually like to have for this meeting though, because we need to know how it's going to look. And that's part of the overall look. Um, mm -hmm. Otherwise, the panels themselves, are they flat black or do they have a flat pattern black. to them? They are pretty much flat black, yes. They, yep. Like the picture that they show on this one. 
Well, it's not technically black completely, but you know, you can tell from the um, the hype. Well, yeah, the 330s. This is the only one we have right now on page 13. Do you have a photograph of that um, panel live? Because there is uh, there mm -hmm. is a line in in that particular one, and maybe it will be minimal enough to be overlooked. But uh, we have seen uh, that there can be quite a difference between those that are uh, more flat black and those that are more patterned. Right. Um, actually, the ones that we have attached to this um, this project are the ones that we're going to use, like the one that you can see on the picture, because we don't have other ones. And I know that we have the ones that are really stay flat on the roof, pretty much. Is the hardware that surrounds them uh, and holds them um, galvanized, or is that all flat black also? Um, as far as I recall, it is black, yes. I mean, it has that uh, apparent look to the to it as the panel alone, but uh, it's kind of hard to tell from a uh, something that is a, a little bit different than an actual installation. But this is promising in the sense that the um, am I correct that the this is an installation that's meant just for the garage alone? Yes, pretty much. Yep. And is it possible uh, for this installation to go forward without the um, units that would be facing Old Smithy Lane? In other words, are the 23 units on the backside of the garage sufficient to accomplish the um, energy uh, goal here? Well, it depends how much the, uh, so the homeowners usually wants to get um, the most of them. That's why we are adding six panels. She will get less actually uh, energy sufficient like for her house because she's not utilizing the, the part on the garage. So we try to accommodate their needs mostly. So that's why there are 29 instead of like only 23. Is it possible to uh, relocate some of those units that would be facing the uh, old Smithy Lane and mm -hmm. uh, place them on another roof that uh, is on that same side of the house uh, adjacent to the garage. So you're saying on the other, uh, so not front of the house and driveway, but to put them on the rear view, but you're still going to have to see them from the Garden Street, right? Because you already see the... Yes, well, that's very visible okay. from Garden Street. Okay, uh, right. I'm not, okay. uh, I'm not disagreeing with that uh, notion, but for instance, if there are six panels um, and some of those panels go on the uh, addition connector uh, between the two buildings, um, there would be- Okay, yeah, 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 I, I know what you mean. Okay. So, I mean, that's um, what I'm talking about. Yeah. I don't know if other commissioners would find that more objectionable, but uh, frankly, I consider, at least from my point of view, uh, part of that uh, view uh, to be backside of the house, even though it faces garden. And I might prefer that uh, rather than uh, the part that would be facing Old Smithy. You, know, you might not be able to fit, fit six there, but you might be able to fit three. Um, on the connector. Um, right, but you want them on the connector in the back, of course, right? Not in the front. So you just want everything in the front technically looking, there's nothing well, on that. I, I, what, I guess what I'm suggesting is to not have the six on the driveway side. Right. Or, uh, to move them in some way over to the uh, other side. Yeah, yeah, I got it. Mm -hmm. Thank you brings mm -hmm. them to greater prominence on the more prominent road on the Garden Street side. So I'm not sure that that's satisfying either. Um, I mean, in my view, it's a newer part of the house. 
uh, and uh, if they are flat black, I, mm -hmm. I mean, like, I, if I am I looking at this correct? Are there skylights there already? Yes. Uh, and yeah. on the uh, yeah, that's the cutout, Doug. And I, I apologize. There are not ten on the front. There's six. I was looking at one drawing that's cutting them in half, but. I think Jen brought up the point, the conduit placement on this are gonna be key. You're going from one far end of a pretty lengthy home to the, right. the garden street side to fix the conduit. If they're, if they're in the ground, that's, that's perfect. But you know, how are you gonna get these to jump the roof? Uh, where are they gonna go? I, I think that's the drawing we usually get from you guys uh, or, or unless they're gonna go right through the roof line. We don't have that today. Um, you know, it's kind of an odd pattern in the back because you're gonna have a gap where those skylights right. are you're showing. Um, and I guess there, yeah, there is six. I thought 10 because I was counting, I was kind of dividing on the one drawing here. But yeah, I think we need to see the, where the conduits are going on this. You don't have big soffits here. Um, you know, if you could come, right. I like to see that. And if they're all gonna come straight down and then go either through the basement, if that connects, that's probably mm -hmm. on a slab, that garage. I don't even know if there's how you can go uh, across through the basement, but. That's well, the house. electrical panel, yeah, it is in the ground. So, like I said, I this is my well, the first meters time. in the front of the house. You're, you're about. Yeah, I know. That's that's the only part I saw that uh, the meter was in the front of the house. The other thing is, um, was my first time for historic district in Weathersfield, honestly. <laughs> so I wasn't aware of all the requirements, but um, I can provide those to you. I just need to talk to my electrician and a crew lead to figure out how they want to do that so yeah so uh, yeah, essentially definitely. what it comes down to is that we regulate anything you can see from a public way right. and so anything that can be seen from any street or any other area that's a public uh open to the public if we can see it we regulate it so okay. those details are important especially in on a house of this era um mm -hmm. you know on a prominent road we're going to need all of the details, um, but we'll talk more about that um, in the next section of our meeting. Does anyone else have any questions on this project? I see the, I think it's the homeowner raising her hand. You're on mute. Okay, there you go. Yes, can I speak to this? And I'd like to tell of you course. a little bit more about myself as the homeowner, um, about you know my house's place in Old Weathersfield and what I've been trying to achieve here. Um, sure. My name is Jennifer Regan Lefebvre. I'm the homeowner along with my husband, Thomas. Uh, we previously had solar panels on a house we owned on Willard Street. Um, so we are familiar with this process. Uh, we moved into Garden Street two years ago and have been wanting to do this for some time. Um, we're really concerned about the long-term sustainability of towns like Weathersfield. And we know that having energy efficiency and being less dependent on fossil fuels is really key for all of us. Um, the there's another issue that I'm trying to address in this particular installation. And, and I have to apologize because I told so many people at Tesla, listen, there's a historic commission. You need to allow more time. You need to give them lots of information. And they say, yeah, 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 yeah we're Tesla. We know what we're doing. So <laughs> I'm sorry it's, it's come to this because we do want to move quite quickly on this, um, partly because there's a tax credit that's expiring. But um, here's what I was thinking. So I went to several different uh, companies for green energy and they all wanted to put panels all over the house. And I didn't want that. So our, the original house was, was built in 1800 and there was an extension which was completed in 2001 by previous owners. And what the extension does is it extends the garage. So it looks like a very long house. May I share my screen? I don't know if you're gonna be able to, you can try. They. Um... Sometimes the IT people don't allow for us to do that. All right, it's disabled. Um, but here's the thing, and I, I think the, I, I should also explain, I'm a professor of history at Trinity College. Uh, I'm a board member on the Webb Dean Stevens Museum, and I'm a member of the Historic Society. So I, I am a committed preservationist who really cares about these buildings. Now, since the plans were approved for the extension on our house, the best practice and thinking in preservation circles, as I'm sure you know, has moved on from thinking that what we want to do is actually blend everything in to rather what we want to do is to recognize what's old and what is new. And what I would like to do is change the fact that when people look at my house, they say, I, is that an old house? It is an old house, right? Because what they see is this long continuous house some of which is built in 1800 and some of which is built in 2000. 
And by putting panels on just the garage section, I think it actually allows you to differentiate between what is old and what is new, which at the moment is a little bit unclear. So when we designed the panels, we wanted to have that clear differentiation between the new garage and the older building. We're not at all proposing to have it on an older building, and we are very consciously proposing to have it on the new section. Because our house is on a corner angle, it's virtually every part of it is seen from the street with the exception of the, of the side of the end of the garage, which you really can't see from the street. Um, so we're kind of stuck in that regard. But I would really ask you all to consider solar panels to be like garages. They are absolutely not original to any of these buildings, but they are essential for modern living. And I think this is going to be the trend over the next 10 or 20 years as we have to move away from dependence on fossil fuels, we're going to have to have solar panels. So I, I would ask you to think about it like a garage, which is actually where we're planning on putting them. Um, the issue with the conductor and the piping is new to me. We are certainly prepared as homeowners to put any kind of landscaping to obscure. Um, we have a lot of shrubs and bushes around our house. We enjoy taking care of them, gardening. So that is something we are absolutely willing to do um, and to work with Tesla on the design. We could certainly reduce the number of panels on the house. It would just mean that we would generate less electricity, which I think would be regrettable. But I wanted you to be clear that I was very deliberate in where we wanted to put these these panels for reasons that have to do with preservation. And Thank I'm happy to answer much. questions. Thank you very much. I appreciate your um, comments. And can, I, can I add something about uh, the was, uh, My name is Thomas Refer. I'm the corner of the house. And uh, thank you so much for your time. Um, uh, I just wanted to have a question about the meter uh, at some point. Uh, the meter is at the corner of the house, uh, um, the, the garden and where our garden, our front yard is, and is con currently completely uh, obliterated by uh, a big bush. Uh, so we can't even see the... Uh, uh, the I'm fully aware about the, uh, the issue of the, uh, what do you call it, the, the conductor and so on. Uh, and uh, uh, hopefully, uh, 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 Tesla can come up with something which should be uh, acceptable for all of us. Thank you very much. Thank you. Anyone else have any questions or comments? Hey, that's the house. That's the house. <laughs> uh, well, there. Am I? Am I uh, hearable? I think so. Yeah. Um. I, I just wanted to say to the professor that I'm uh, appreciative of her argument. Um, and I'm not uh, averse to having uh, the uh, panels be viewable from Old Smithy. Um, it depends on what the panels look like, though. And because we didn't really have a photograph of an installation with them live, I don't know if that was a leap that I could just take today. And that's why I was asking about the installation on the connector. Uh, if it was going to give you about the same number of panels. Um, I'm intrigued by the argument that you're making, but I, I'm somewhat concerned that that building is not just a garage, it's also a residence on the second floor. And I kind of feel like it might add more prominence to the eye of a, a building that really should have been subservient uh, to the original building to begin with. And so that's the other reason. Uh, I would say that would be my counter to the idea that the house would benefit from the uh, panels being there. Um, I think that in some ways, the, uh, that will draw the eye more to the, this structure than we would really want to see happen. And more importantly, maybe more than you would want to. Uh, so it's something to think about. Yeah, it's not impossible. Um, I mean, still, I think the, 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 the beauty of the original house is, I mean, to us, it's very striking and it's what people notice first. Um, but, you know, this house shouldn't have a garage. None of these houses should have garages and they all do have garages and driveways. And they have, in many cases, multiple cars parked overnight all the time outside of them. You gotta go to bed, hon. Yeah. Um, so. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> I'm now I'm said, a lawyer, but, <laughs> um, but it's I, a bigger, at, I look at it as a as big as a bigger issue for you almost. So that's the reason why I just wanted you to think about it. And if you still are where you are, you still are where you are. But that was just the counter argument to maybe consider. Thank
Thanks. I hear you. The other thing I would say is we, we looked at lots of different companies and designs. And the reason we chose Tesla was one for the pricing, but two, because we thought their panels looked the most discreet. Um, we think the Trinity ones are much, they're much higher off the roof level. It looks, they, they look a little bit bulkier. The Tesla ones by comparison look really slick. Um, yeah. And so that's, that's true. The that's true. That they were going to blend in better. That's great to know. Thank uh, you so much. Professor, what, the extra time. Yeah, thank you, Professor. What we'd like to see is, and it does look like on this picture, we try to get rid of that silver metallic pattern, that check, checkerboard pa pattern. It's just unfortunately in this submission, I don't, it really is difficult to see. And Doug had asked, uh, you know, was it going to be the powder black? You know, is there, is there any silver around the framing or the mounting brackets? And uh, are they going to be angled? And unfortunately, we don't have that, I think is what Doug is alluding to as well. There, it's not, it is all black in the photos that they sent us, but. Um... Actually, uh, if you guys take a look at the picture behind my head, you'll see a picture of this te Tesla's solar paddles from their uh, promotional literature that's online right now. Yeah, yeah. That's just that, unfortunately, I really don't get a very good sense of that. Plus we don't know that that's the same product, et cetera. But, but thanks for. What are the arrows on it, Vasek? Uh, actually the arrows aren't arrows there. It's text, it says no visible yeah. grid, low okay. profile. I did, it's just so tiny on my screen, I can't see what it is. Yeah, well. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Um, uh, Sorry. Kim, Kim just got dumped from our... I think there's another question. A homeowner has a question, Jen. I, I, sorry, I just have a, just a, a small remark, but uh, there was a discussion earlier on about uh, whether it is possible to, uh, it's, uh, to, to move the panel to the back between the addition and so on. Um, I'm not an engineer and I know nothing about electricity, uh, but my understanding from Tesla is that uh, uh, the angle on the, uh, from where the sun is coming and so on is much more efficient for the production of electricity on the front. Yes, that's true. Yeah, yeah that Perfect. is true. We go, our designers go by that. That's, um, okay. yeah, it depends Thank where the sun hits. Definitely we're only month. concerned with the appearance uh, for our purposes but I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Does anyone from the public have any questions for this applicant? Now we have a problem at the moment because Kim got dumped from the entrance and on the computer it flashed up for a moment that Kathy is the administrator now. So what, what do you need Jen? Cause I'm pretty good. I don't know if you can let Kim back in if she's trying to get back in. Mm, let me see. I don't see that she's trying to get back in. It doesn't show me that she's in the waiting room. Okay. She just quit. <laughs> <laughs> she just got me a check. That's it. She got booted out. So it's just a matter of time, right? Let me, let me just give her a sec to see if we can get finally, her. Finally, finally drove her away. <laughs> the pro I'm glad it's you, Kathy, instead of me, because you may have to mute and unmute people. Uh, I can do that. She's trying to get back in now. It's, it's not coming up that she's waiting for it or asking to come in. <sighs> yeah, I see that I'm host, but I don't see that anyone's asking to participate or that she's in our waiting room or. Yeah, the problem is that she's recording it. Although it still shows that it's being recorded. Yeah, it's recording, it's yeah. flashing to their server. So, yeah. and Linda's still here, time. so we've got her as well. All right, let's uh, continue, and if you could just keep an eye and see if she pops up again. Yep. I don't have anything coming up on mine. Okay. Um, but I'm never the host anyway. But you are officially the host at the moment. You must have been the next person in after her or something. <laughs> All right, so we'll move on to the, no one was here to speak in favor against this application for 89 Garden. We'll move on to 5092265 Main Street, the sign, the business sign. Is there someone here for that today? Okay, uh, Larry Grenier is looking to be unmuted. Okay, so Larry Grenier. <laughs> Sorry, we're working on Sorry. it.
Is it unmuted on your screen? Is it his screen that's See muted? Him. Yes, I think it's his screen. Mr. So Granier, if you could just, yeah. Go ahead, Jen. That's okay. If you go down to the lower there left. There you go. Oh, great. You got it. Excellent. All right, sorry about that. Thank you for having me today. It's quite all right. My computer skills are pretty sor sorry. So anyone who can run this is welcome for sure. So we have the um, mock-up of your sign. Can you tell us what the material is? I didn't notice what that was. What uh, the, the, the sign material is not gonna change. It's just the lettering. So uh, the sign that was approved uh, last, last year, um, for the new sign in the front of the building is going to stay the same. So the dimensions and the material is going to be the same. It's just the lettering because uh, my wife, uh, Pat, has changed the name of the company. So we've rebranded the company. Um, and it's just so it's just a name change. And um, the lettering, we're going to keep the same color as what's on the, on the current sign now. Uh, because it just matches better with uh, the structure of the building. Uh, um, and it doesn't necessarily have to be the same color of our logo. So that goldish color will be the lettering color. Okay. Does anyone have any questions for this applicant? Uh, uh, yes. Uh, so are you just flipping the sign over and changing the lettering or no, it's a brand new sign, but same material you're saying, same yeah, dimensions. Well, uh, we've um, contracted with uh, three, uh, Image 360. They did the original sign last year. Um, and what they told me they would do, and they're the ones that did the rendering of, with the new, uh, the new name, uh, is that they would just remove uh, the lettering that's there now and put new lettering on. Okay, so you're reusing the sign, just removing the lettering, same color, the, the gold here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's Thank just uh, it's just a name change. Yep. But I do have uh, one other question, if I could. Sure. Uh, my wife, Pat, and I were in town in Old Wethersfield uh, uh, last Thursday for the traditional tree lighting ceremony. And it was pretty quiet downtown. Uh, so we took a walk around and we had dinner at the Charles, which was uh, really good, phenomenal. Uh, we're relatively new to town as a business. Our main office is in Springfield, Mass. And we live in Massachusetts as well. But we enjoy going to Old Wethersfield. But what we noticed is that <clears throat> um, where my wife's office is at uh, 265 Main is the only business that doesn't have a lighted sign at night. Mm -hmm. So is that another application process if we asked our landlord to put a light out on the sign to light the sign at night? Yeah, you're certainly welcome to send in another application, um, you know, with the specific lighting and the placement on the facade that you would want, um, of course, with your landlord's permission as well. Okay. All right. Well, that's Larry. It's Kim. Can you hear me? Oh, yes, Kim. I can. Uh, I can. I have really bad connection right now, but um, I can call you. We can talk about it tomorrow um, about your lighting okay. so we can go over all that. Okay. All right. Great. I appreciate Perfect. that. Thank you very much. All Anyone right. else have any questions? Hearing none, any members of the public wishing to speak in favor or against? Hearing none, we'll move on to application 5093. Sorry, Kim. I'm sorry, uh, Jen. I had a quick question, but I was still muted. Sure. Uh, it just have, has the rebranding already uh, extended to all your um, other graphics, sir? Um, or is this leading the charge? Um, the reason why I asked is that the building is um, pretty, um, pretty old fashioned looking. Yeah. And uh, the uh, font on this sign is a little bit contemporary. Uh, and I'm not saying that that 
uh, would be a deal breaker for me, but it's just something that is a little bit um, different uh, considering the, the placement of this particular uh, building. It's kind of made to look like a, uh, a colonial era office of some kind. And uh, so the font is pretty modern uh, and sometimes those, that works out really well. Uh, especially if you're trying to uh, gain brand recognition uh, for that, uh, as opposed to using the same name, uh, I'm using the same font that you already have with the new name. So I'm just bringing that up because you never know what a applicant's response might be. Uh, so to me, that's one other alternative here would be to uh, change the name using the same font that's current on the sign. Uh, but if that would really not be your preference because you're trying to create brand recognition under the new one, uh, I'd certainly be respectful of that as well. Right. Well, and I, I would just add if you just, Mr. Grenier, that's just, that's one commissioner's perspective, which is certainly Correct. valid to be expressed, but font has a wide range um, of, of effects on people, so. Um, yeah, no, I, and I appreciate the question. Um, the rebranding uh, is, is, you know, was part of a plan for us. And in the financial services industry, uh, anything we do with branding and or um, uh, you know, website build or sure. any, any document work needs to be needs to go through um, um, a vetting process through um, through the financial services industry. So um, yes, we've accepted uh, this uh, logo as our new logo for our new brand. Uh, and it's been accepted by the financial services industries as acceptable. Understand. Yeah. You really need go no further. Uh, it was really meant uh, to be a comment by one commissioner, uh, but I was looking to pique the interest of the applicant as well. And uh, based on what you've indicated, uh, it would be a hardship or a burden uh, to, I think, revisit that now. Um, and again, I think we're happy to have the business uh, and uh, hopefully this will soon be a recognizable uh, logo uh, for lots of customers. Yeah, and, and uh, uh, much less um, of a of a burden uh, than the typeface. Thank you. Uh, you're thank welcome. you very much for coming in. Welcome to the neighborhood. Well, thank you. I, we uh, we enjoy being there. And um, one of the things that we're trying to do with uh, rebranding our company is to try to attract younger people. Um, and it would be great to attract more young people. Uh, to uh, the you know old Weathersfield as well, uh, and just so you know, we we enjoy our neighbors Spiro and Julia as well. They're doing a great job next door to us too. So they are. Thank you very very much for coming in. Does yeah. anyone have, else have any questions? Anyone from the public wishing to speak in favor or against? Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion to close the public hearing and move on to the public meeting. We have a Jen. We have some more. Oh, we have the one from the top. Number I apologize. seven. Um, application five zero eight eight. The back to four six one to four six three Middletown Ave. Yeah, sorry, uh, uh, Rich from Trinity Solar. I uh, apologize for joining late. Um, we're looking to install twenty seven panels on the back of uh, four sixty one to four sixty three uh, Middletown Ave. Uh, the system that we're proposing to install would be uh, all black, black cell, black frame, black backing, all hidden conduit, um, very low profile uh, system. And then um, you wouldn't see the uh, inverter or any of the conduit from the road. Thank you. Hi, Claire. <laughs> Thank you very much. Does anyone have any questions on this application? Uh, why are we here if it can't be seen from the road? 
Um, I think it's just the issue of the oh, making uh -huh. sure that none of the conduit, okay. all we're going to see is that um, shut off panel. Everything else is going to be interior. Okay. Is yep. that correct? I, yeah. The, uh, sorry to interrupt. The, the uh, meter is on the side of the house. Uh, it wouldn't be visible from the, uh, the front of the road. Um, and also there's a factory in the back. So there's no um, street on the back that you'd be able to see the property from. Okay. Thank you very much for coming in. Um, does anyone have any other questions on this application? Hearing none, any members of the public wishing to speak in favor or against? Hearing none, we'll move on to application 5093. I apologize, 41 Harmon Place. Thank you. We're on mute. I know you're here. There Thank you are. You. Okay. Hi. Um, I, I realize now that I've asked no one to identify themselves by name and address for the record this evening. There's <laughs> always something. If you guys would do so for me, that would be great. How are you? I'm, I'm Brian Shea. I'm the homeowner with my wife, Karina, over here in the corner. Um, uh, 41 Harmon Place. Great. Tell us about your application for tonight. Um, so, well, 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 this is Mark Picard from CJ Picard. Yes, uh, Mark Picard, CJ Picard <laughs> Corporation, 50 Cranston Avenue. Uh, we're looking to construct a second floor addition, as the application says, on the rear of the house. Uh, the siding, the roofing, I believe, is GAF Timberline Slate. The siding is cedar r, &R shingle, seven inch to the weather, which is what is going to be used on the addition. The windows are going to be trim line windows, which are aluminum clad and then trimmed with wood brick mold to match the existing and a wood sill. Um, uh, pretty much that's straightforward. Okay. I have one question looking at the drawings, which are very helpful. Mm -hmm. uh, the diameter of the columns that are going to be used. Yes. What's the columns. Time? So the columns, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be putting sonotubes tubes with bell bottoms up to grade. We are then going to be putting a Simpson cradle with a six by six pressure treated. Yep. The pressure treated is going to be wrapped in pine. And what we're going to do is put a base and cap molding. The base will probably be a square stock because the house doesn't have a lot of flair to it. Mm -hmm. The top molding will probably be a bed molding because that's what's used on the gables as the rake edge. Okay. So to match and keeping character, that's what we'll use as a top molding. So the columns will be square and about eight inches in cross section, right? Correct. Yes, that's about what they would be. Because mm -hmm. from the drawing, it was it's really hard to tell whether they're round or square or what. Well, um, I, I don't, I do everything by hand still. Oh, I do. Old school. That's the way <laughs> so. I brought to. <laughs> but yes, they're going to be square round columns, approximately eight, just under eight by eight by the time they're finished. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, gutters. You've got existing downspouts at the front of the house and the back of the house. Correct. Are the downspouts in the back of the house going to stay where they are and the addition is going to drain into those? Correct. Okay. Because mm -hmm. I was just wondering, again, if you're going to be moving those downspouts, how are you going to resolve that? But that's a wonderful resolution there. Yep. Downspouts remain in current position. Okay. Trim to match. I'm good. Okay. Anybody else? Doug? Nothing? We're good? Okay. <laughs> Anyone from the potent? No, no further questions. Anyone from the public? Wishing to speak in favor or against this application? Hearing none. Thank you very much for coming in, gentlemen. Right, thank you for your time. Thank now you. I will entertain a motion to close the public hearing and open the public meeting. I'm going to motion. Second. Thank you. Turning to application 5087, Kathleen Carpino at 28 Middletown Avenue. Jen, we just have to have the vote. Vote on the motion. Yep. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I apologize. I don't know where I am today. Uh, vote on the motion, please. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, hearing none, the motion passes. Application 5087, Kathleen Carpino. Actually, Jen, before we go further, who's voting, me or Kathleen? 
Um, I thought we had Damien on too, but I don't see him now. Yeah, he disappeared a while ago. Okay. Um, who voted in the last meeting? I didn't get a chance to look at the houses today, so if I mean, you know, I would. I am here, but I intended to watch. I think it's best if Vosik uh, votes. I, I was in the last meeting, so it's Vosik's turn. Oh. Okay, great. Thank you. Yep. You're up, Vosik. Okay, so okay. may I have a motion on the first application at 28 Middletown Avenue? Go way up to there. I'll make a motion to approve as submitted. I'll second it. Thank you. Um, so uh, fortunately, you know, obviously it's regrettable when we have an application come in after work is already done. Fortunately, I think in this case, it's an outbuilding that's set relatively far back in a narrow view from the street. Um, I would not uh, be, be crazy about this same application on the front house where we have um, a siding with much wider exposure, I think it would really change the look of the house. But I think for me, at least, um, it, the distance in the narrow view to the backyard in that location um, on, a, on a relatively narrow street as well, um, I think it's going to have a minimal impact, but I'm interested in what other people have to say. I, I would agree that, I'm sorry, uh, I just wanted to support the second by saying I would agree that the sight lines are tight there uh, and there won't be uh, a, a, a substantial impact on the district. Sorry about that, Chris, if you want to go. No, that wasn't me. No, I agree. It, it, it's after the fact uh, are always difficult, but it is pretty far back. It is a detached garage and uh, they're not planning on doing the whole house uh, for now. Actually, if if this application had come in before the fact, I think what we could have done is guided the homeowner towards uh, substitutions for asbestos siding that would work equally well. Uh, there are a number of cement board products that will replicate the asbestos or the wood or whatever it is we're trying to replicate there. And I think if uh, when it comes down to if and when she de decides to change a house, I think that's the way the homeowner should be guided. You make a I good agree. point. I agree. And I think, you know, as always, we don't let the outbuildings wag the dog. Um, but in this Give case- Give me a chance to say that, Jen. The, thank you. <laughs> I like to say it every time. The, um, the siding itself on the house is actually in really good shape. Of course. And, but, but for the storm, it lasts forever. Last forever. Yep. So it probably can be painted should they wish to upgrade anyway. All right, all in favor? Before you Aye. Say, can oh. I just can I just make a note that you are voting on this based on no garage doors as presented tonight. That's correct. He withdrew correct. It, yeah. correct. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none. The motion carries. Application 5088 461 to 463 Middletown Avenue. I'll make a motion to approve as submitted. I'll second. Um, I, it's a very complete application with all the information that we um, look to see. Um, it is really not visible. We were able to confirm the placement of conduits um, and all the mechanical information. Um, not visible. It's a good solar application for the district, which is not visible. Agreed. Anything further? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries. Application 508929 Harmon Place. Make a motion to approve as submitted. I'll second. I think the homeowner has come in with a very appropriate fence for the style of the house and certainly that area of the district. Uh, it will be a minimum impact because you're not gonna see much of it because it's end on in relatively narrow sight lines. Uh, overall, I think it will be an addition. Thank you. Anything further? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 
Aye. Aye. Aye. Aye. Opposed, hearing none, the motion carries. Application 5090, 10 Fernwood. Make a motion approved as submitted. I'll second that. I think the uh, same comments. Again, he, he's matching an existing fence. Uh, we discussed the, the Vasic uh, double gators and uh, he addressed that. And I think it's appropriate for the, for the district. I agree. Um, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, hearing none, the motion carries. Application 5091, 89 Garden Street. I make a motion to deny without prejudice. I'll second. You know, we go back and forth about solar. Um, is it a utility? Is it a building material? What's appropriate for the district? Um, this particular application is visible from two streets. It's visible from Old Smithy and it's visible from Garden Street. The Garden Street in particular, although it is technically on a garage, is low, it's flat, and it's very visible from Garden Street. I think that um, where solar is great is where we don't see it in the district much. Um, I think this is an application that sets a precedence of harm for the district. I agree, Claire. Um, I do think it has a substantial impact both on this property, but on the district as well with the location of the property. Um, it is extremely visible from all angles. Um, and I don't know how you get away from that. Uh, you know, additionally, um, the fact that we don't know about the conduits and it's hard to tell where they're going to go even you know, Vasek mentioned stipping it if that were an option, but the front addition from the um, old Smithy side of the property, you know, you have different jogs. They're not all on the same plane and the same applies to the back. I do agree, you know, that that back portion, even though it's on what is the garage and addition, I think there's an in-law apartment or something up there. Um, from the back of the house, when you're driving down garden, and then the facade that faces garden, that's not immediately reading as a garage from that side of the house either. Um, and I think Doug's point was correct that it, that addition should have obviously been subservient to the main house and it wasn't, it was built pretty large. And I think that does add to the prominence of that back view to add the panels to it. So from that perspective, I think the harm um, is irreparable both to the house itself and to the district with this particular application. I, I agree with the two previous commissioners and, and I think any advantage you had from height on the old Smitty side uh, that would have been on the driveway appearance, the severe slope to that back in the Garden Street view as you head east is, is it would, uh, especially with the pattern with the cutouts for the, for those two skylights, it's really going to be prominent and adverse effect uh, to the district. Anything further? Yeah, I, um, I would chime in at this point. Um, I would say that uh, I think that solar, as you heard from what I said already, I don't object to uh, solar on that uh, salt box roof of the garage. Um, to me, it's a whole lot of asphalt that you see. Uh, it would be hard to think of that roof as being uh, anything but utilitarian. And I think that placing uh, black glass on it, uh, even though, especially because in some ways, especially because the skylights are there, uh, you're just taking uh, an area that already um, was a later addition and, and you're giving it some function. Um, I don't think that you will notice it substantially more than what you notice right now because it already has uh, created a, a massing situation. Um, I don't know if I voted for this uh, when it first came to us or if I was just coming on and, and my membership hadn't 
taken place yet. But as you can see, I have some concerns ab about uh, the design that was approved, but it's there. And uh, I think that what informs me about this project is the house at the corner of uh, Oldham and, uh, I'm sorry, Chesterfield and Oldham Road, uh, where it's quite visible from the side street, um, the, the panels, but they're clearly on the back of the house. And so they are considered a little bit differently than if they were on the front. And so uh, that's why I don't have a problem with the panel. Uh, another reason I don't have a problem with the panels on the garage uh, and it's part of the reason why I wouldn't mind them on the back of the connector, because again, it's uh, I as you get close to Garden Street um, and and get onto the uh, Colonial Building itself, um, I they've stayed away from that, and it, it clearly looks like a utilitarian uh, addition on the back. I, I mean, on that side, even though it's visible from Garden. Um, I, I would say that I'm not completely uh, even unwilling to embrace it on the uh, garage, even though I made the argument against it because we haven't had a chance to see the actual panels from the ground nor the connections, uh, but I would be able to uh, approve this today uh, without panels facing Old Smithy and with a stipulation on the uh, uh, connection although I still would prefer to wait until January, even if my vote would be substantially the same to approve it if the uh, panels were mostly on the other side. I'm, I mean, I certainly sleep on uh, the argument that was made, uh, but I think that ultimately I have to rest on the argument that I made, uh, which is, I think you don't wanna add more prominence uh, to that extension. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, Anybody else? Yeah, I might as well weigh, weigh in with my bit. Uh, the The view from Garden Street is basically a glancing view, glancing view across the back of the garage. There's existing skylights on the garage now. It does not read as a structure built in 1800. Uh, no, I agree. The argument unfortunately the representative of the company was not all that well prepared uh, and but if you take a look from the right angle at the google maps photographs of the house and the pitch on the garage is the same as the pitch on the two additions next to it before it gets to the main house uh, so any argument that the those parts of the roof are unsuitable because of the incorrect pitch just doesn't wash. Um, no one says incorrect pitch. I don't, I didn't remember hearing that at all. That's what the rep said. Yeah. Okay. No. Thanks. No, I just want to clarify. I wanted to understand. Yeah. So the pitch yep. is the same Thank on you. the garage as it is on the next piece, as it is on the next piece. Um, is there room for six panels across that back? Probably. Am I qualified to install panels? No, uh, but it can probably work. As far as the conduit, we can very easily stip that it shall be buried. We can also stip that the base, that the inverter shall be mounted indoors. Uh, if there is a very major problem with that, the applicant or the representative of uh, the company can come back and make a good case about why it can't be done. Uh, we can also step that all exposed panel hardware shall be a black finish. And that's pretty much what the stuff on their promotional literature is on their website. So I think that's pretty easy. Um, and at that point, we have, and you can step no panels on the part of the roof facing uh, Old Smitty Line or not. Uh, I think I've made my views somewhat clear that I do view it as a utility as opposed to a structural piece of the uh, house. Um, I, you know, is it, is putting solar panels on 
a secondary structure much different than putting storms, which are pre-approved, aluminum storm windows, which are pre-approved on the main facade of an important house. That's open to discussion, but that's my feelings there. So I would, I will vote against this application, uh, against this uh, motion, motion to deny without prejudice. Thank Can you. I ask a point of clarification, Jen, here too? Sure. You know, the, the extension, if you look at page 45 of the 73 that we have, <laughs> and I guess we probably should have asked, uh, right, the, the pitch being the same. And unfortunately, you're right, Bats, this, unfortunately, it was our first time and the rep did not do a service maybe to the homeowners. The homeowners certainly made a, a case. I should have asked, like, from that extension, because you can see the bump out in the back of the garage or if that's a storage area, how far from the edge of the roof line up will that, will those panels be? I mean, they're gonna be six feet off that line or how far up? Who? I, I, yeah, we have oh. no way of knowing. Yeah, that's um, why we weren't told. So yeah, so I, you know, going back, I, I gave my views too, but, and I know they want a tax break here, but yeah, I, I don't know if I wanna flat out deny maybe a table here to get some detail, but still that, that I, I disagree that that's a glancing view too. I think it's a pretty I good view from Garden. Yeah, I don't think it's a glancing view it's at a all very clear view. from a prominent. So it probably wouldn't be worth I, the time. I, it would be no, nice. No, I should I, have asked the rep to how far off the off that. And I, I will say, you know, I, I made the motion without prejudice on for purpose so that um, if they can put together something that is not visible from either Old Smithy or Garden, they can come back um, right. or some other kind of, of solar situation. Um, my feeling is obviously Yes, Vasek, we could stip everything and we do that sometimes. And then if they come back and they need to make changes, they can. For me, that wouldn't make any difference um, because it really is very visible from two, two thoroughfares. Oh yeah. Yeah, so. But if it was so, visible from just one thoroughfare? Uh, for me, that would still be a problem. Okay. If, it was, if it was not visible from garden, would it be a different application? It would be an entirely different application. It, right. Well, they we could take off the front and the back wasn't able to be seen. We would be in the position we are on Middletown Avenue, right. which is yeah, a completely well. different application. Yeah. But there is no, there is no part of this property that's not visible from a public way. That's right. But that it, we can't change that. We are no. presented that's with that and have to decide what's appropriate for it given its circumstances. So I and think the, the fact that the, the, motion, the motion is made on a without prejudice basis, you can't submit an application that is substantially the same. If they wanna submit an application that's got sufficient changes in it no, no. Um, and try again, they're certainly welcome to do that. But we're without gonna vote on this motion first. Without prejudice means they can come back with exactly the same thing. Correct. It's so anybody else? Yeah. All set. Okay. Any? Well, uh, hold on. Sorry, Jen. So to go back and not knowing Robert's rules here is exactly. So without prejudice, then to go back, you know, if it's not substantial different placement, they, they eliminate the six on the, the front facade and come back with the back, show us where the conduits are going, where the inverter and stuff. Is that substantially enough? I think they could come back with that application with the details that we've raised tonight, including um, clarity on whether the panels have any sort of uh, markings on them or if they're flat without pattern. All of those things combined, they, they could certainly come back. But um, you know, what, we have what we have tonight. And obviously, the person who made the motion, Claire, and I who seconded are not comfortable stipping out conduits from that length underground without knowing if it can be done. Um, you know, we certainly stip out things that we know are entirely possible, but that is something that was not addressed by the contractor tonight. And it's a crucial piece of what we're gonna see, because as you know, we've seen in the past where That's they huge. run it across the roof line, they run it across, you know, over the roof line. So we need to have some greater detail on those. Well, that's why I asked her, no, I agree. That yeah. conduit is very important on this when you jump roofs, yeah. Of course. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 
All those opposed? Nay. Uh, three to two, the motion carries. On to application, sorry, I've lost my spot now. Application 5092265 Main Street, the sign. Make I'll make a motion to, to approve. Nope. I'll second it. Thank you. It's had plenty of discussion. It's an appropriate sign for the property. And uh, it clearly has been the subject of a lot of thought by the applicant. Anything further? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? aye. Hearing none, the motion carries. Application 5093, application at 41 Harmon Place. I'll make a motion to approve as submitted. You don't want to step the columns? <laughs> you may step the columns, sir. <laughs> Whatever. I'll pass. <laughs> I think that they were spelled out pretty clearly. I think we're okay. Um, and they also, I don't know that are visible at all, are they? They are. They'll be Glancing. visible from the two sides. Glancing. Okay. It and was pretty tight. Back from the that house to the column. Okay. You don't see all three of them, but you see two of them. The, uh, uh, was there a second? If there wasn't, uh, I'll second it. Okay. Thank you, Doug. Sure. Uh, I would just say that uh, based on the representations of the builder, uh, I think that we do have documentation of the ultimate uh, look uh, for the trim out of the addition. So although I understand uh, Vasek's uh, issue, um, I'm, uh, it's because he was good enough to ask the question to begin with that we have the answer we can live with. So uh, I think it'll be, a, uh, overall, the building is, uh, uh, its extension uh, does not throw off its uh, inviting proportion to the street. Great, thank you. Anything further? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Hearing none, the motion carries. On to the approval of minutes from November 10, 2020. The usual uh, thanks to our uh, reporter, Linda, and to our historic di district coordinator, Kim, uh, at this time. Is that a motion to approve? Oh, yes. I'm sorry. I thought we were on the discussion. <laughs> That's okay. I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Um, other business. We have some public comments tonight. Sure. Somewhere. I think Attorney Lobo is here with the uh, building. Uh, I'm sorry, with the business operator. Uh, my name is Fabio Lobo. I'm here with Lucas Isaac Lucas, who's the owner of Lucky Blues. Did everyone receive the email that had the schematics? So these are rough drawings for what we're planning uh, to do at Lucky Blues, which is at 222 Main Street, as everybody's probably aware of. Um, we've actually been working on this, shockingly, in pre-COVID era. Uh, we've been working on this with the Weathersfield Historical Society um, in 2019. We presented that to them in 2019 October meeting, I believe, September, October meeting, um, and they were in favor. And as you are aware, um, there is the, obviously, the patio, and we are looking to cover the patio. Now, the reason why we wanted to be before you is before we go to full drawings and go before planning and before you formally, and then before planning and zoning, we wanted to kind of uh, provide you with our aesthetic vision. Um, as you know, Lucas has been there for many years. He is very, uh, tuned to the aesthetics of the property. I think he has brought a wonderful aesthetic to it, including the patio, which is beautiful and pavers. Um, and looking to have it obviously be fully covered 
there wouldn't be most of the time there wouldn't be sides so that it would be potential to bring the sides down for a portion of the time this would not obviously be year round but it would extend the use of the patio for a huge portion of the year um, i provided not only like the aesthetics on page one and two of what it would look like and three and four, but then also the diagram on the last page of what it would look like. We are contemplating having it be a metal roof. In, and if you look at the page one, there's actually kind of two tiers to it so that it can't be flat because of snow. We wanted to kind of blend in to the aesthetics of the historic building that it will abut. Uh, we're certainly open to ideas, but from a functionality standpoint and an aesthetic standpoint, we thought that this was kind of the best way to proceed. I mean, we're here to kind of uh, take any questions take any suggestions from, from you. Um, obviously you're a long time, you know, residents of the town and ha are familiar with the property. And we wanna kind of do what's aesthetically pleasing for the property, but also make it more functional. And if nothing, COVID has brought to the forefront that people want to dine outside. They wanna extend the ability to dine outside. My client, had to make the unfortunate decision because of the size of the building and all of the situation that's happening to close for December and January. Um, and what we're looking to do, and what we were looking to do before COVID in October of 2019 is extend the life of outdoor dining, which I think everybody enjoys. Where to begin? <laughs> okay. So let me, I'm sorry, Vasek, go ahead. So I take it that what you're looking for is our take on what you're, pre what you're planning on presenting. And so overall, I think the concept is good. Uh, putting a roof over that large chunk of pavement is not a bad thing. The one hesitation I have is the you basically have a main roof and then you have a small essentially shed roof off the front and the back and my concern is that the part going off the front which extends beyond the front of the main building sort of puts that whole part of the entire structure as the most prominent part so basically it reads at that point that the most prominent part of the building is this tent as opposed to the building that dates way back historically and actually is a very attractive building. Uh, would it be something that the owner would consider is possibly to make the main part of the tent stop where it does, not build the front part of the sort of shed roof and, you know, continue with umbrellas or something for just that part. Okay. A couple of That's things. my take on it. Okay, and just working on it. So the width of the patio is narrower than the width of the building. Okay, so there's that. Um, the, the problem with umbrellas so I'll, I'll kind of, and if I've missed any portion of your concerns, please like bring them up again. So if you look at the, the, the width of like, we try to make, and this is the reason why we picked even the aesthetics of the color so that the building would still be the prominent feature in, in aesthetics. But the problem with just umbrellas is your staff is running back and forth. So you're talking about not only rain and precipitation, but also wind. heat and wind and, and cold. Hold on. I, I recognize, I recognize uh, umbrellas are not an ideal situation. Uh, you're, you do note that the width of the patio is narrower than building. However, 
if you look at your second page, which is where you represent the building and the patio together. Things in front. Yeah, the front, the west elevation. Uh, if you look at it, it's the patio tent plus the connector and that whole chunk reads wider than the building. Well, but this is why we also reduce the connector down to be less of a profile. Yeah. I mean, the reality is the problem is if you have staff and there's precipitation, your staff is just getting. Snow. We understand. Well, we understand yeah, right. the logistic it's concerns. Get, you know, functional, and it is the balance of the functional and the aesthetics. It's actually not, ma'am. Uh, we don't regulate the functionality of your property at all. We are only charged by statute with the aesthetics, with the vision well, from the public way. And, and it's so actually not quality. aesthetics, it's, it's appropriateness. Yeah, it, 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 whether it's appropriate or not, it has nothing to do, we have nothing to do with whether the design works for your staff. We understand it's an issue and we're sensitive to it, but by statute, we cannot consider those things when we're reviewing. We are only reviewing whether it's appropriate in its appearance for the district. Understood. So I, I think that the point that um, Commissioner Nicholas was making is um, almost a massing kind of, of perspective. You're making a face, Fawcett. Say it yourself, Ben. No, no, no. You're you're good. <laughs> so, so I think what he's saying is that by having that roof come forward of the of the of the building, it 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 changes the prominence of the house and the patio, the, the original house and the patio. So, um, we're thinking we're looking and thinking about well, how would it it work from an appropriateness perspective with that massing to have that front line pulled back. But if I could just ask a question and maybe I missed it somewhere. You said the roof is metal. What's the color gonna be? Is it ridged? Is it flat? Is it seamed? It, we're, we're contemplating that it would be a ridged kind of like it is in the-, in the, um, the pictures show ridges is that, so you're looking at ridges that are running. Correct, so that it, when there's snow, it runs off. It's corrugated. Okay. So from yeah, a, corrugated. From that's, a, that's a good name. I want to do like an overall vision of what you're looking for. This is an essentially an addition, except it's not a tent. It's not a tent covering. It is an addition that's going to stay up year round. And in fact, sometimes we'll also have walls. Well, the, the walls would just be the drop down uh, plastic. Yeah. Okay. Because so, um, as an overall as an overall vision of this property, it's the most prominent corner probably in the district, um, with the church across the street and that property itself. And we have the the commission not while I was on it, but the commission has entertained another project on this house in the past, and it was an addition to the backside, and that did not pass. And, and so in addition, you can imagine that something of this massing that is not temporary, but is permanent and meant to be up all year round um, is a huge undertaking, a huge undertaking. And so it, we're going to strictly scrutinize it on this property for sure. And the details are very important. Um, and so the questions that we're asking are trying to get to how could it work if it can work. Correct, and this is why we're before you as this is a fact gathering. I, I understand that your charge is to deal with appropriateness. However, we have to, the investment has to, at the end of the day, be something that can work and be viable. Um, so we're here, like I said, to listen and see how we can bridge the gap. I mean, this property is, it is one of the most significant properties in, in, the, in that area. We have, I think, been good stewards of that property in the past. So, and we're here to kind of bring it to forward. So- Can I have, I'm sorry. 
Um, when, when you're done, attorney, I have a thought that I'd like to share. Sure. Um, you know, I understand uh, and, and appreciate kind of both arguments here. Uh, it's easy because I'm not the one who went first, but um, I, I have a couple of concerns uh, that I think still leaves room for there being some cover there. Uh, the permanent covering uh, is kind of difficult because as uh, Commissioner Wolf says, it's really turning it into a pavilion. Probably that's the best uh, description for the property because it's still going to be open on the sides. It sounds like you're representing that the drops will be clear maybe. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, one of the nice, and I understand that trees have fallen in that area or come down in that area and the patio has gotten larger and it, there's some desirability to protect it from the weather so it's still usable. At the same time, I don't know that every single person that's sitting outside needs to have a roof over them. And, you know, one of the things that I liked the best about uh, another restaurant here in town on the river was I liked being able to look straight up uh, and uh, on a nice day, enjoy the sky. Uh, and I think to a certain extent, uh, Commissioner Miklas's suggestion that you step back the uh, covering, I realize uh, sacrifices some of the enclosure you're looking for uh, but maybe that enclosure could be motorized uh, and come out when it's appropriate and come back uh, when it doesn't have to be. Um, when it comes to awnings, uh, I have my own experience, which uh, uh, two houses in my extended family had uh, awnings. Uh, and in fact, I work right across the street from uh, an awning company uh, where the awning uh, went back to because the problem with the awning was in the off season, seeing the bars. And so I realized to a certain extent, you're maybe trying to save us from having a cage. Um, but I, I'm not sure that, and, and I like the kind of low profile notion of this um, structure, but I do think it comes too far forward. Um, it doesn't mean that I, I wouldn't be one over to it or uh, if you use a different fabric or pattern that I could live with the uh, extension all the way to the building. I, I would say that to, to what Commissioner Wolf said, uh, I mean, this is clearly a, a structure that's separate from the building. And so massing wise, I don't know that it presents exactly the same issue of as previous um, uh, proposals for the property uh, has, have given us. At the same time, I don't know if I could go all the way to embracing uh, what's here, even though in some ways in, in its simplicity and its utility, um, uh, you know, it has some uh, appreciation. Uh, I, I can have some appreciation for it. So uh, in any case, I, I'm really, what I appreciate the most is that uh, the um, proprietor called on you for help uh, because clearly you're listening to the kinds of things we're saying here. Uh, and, and I think you can be of some assistance uh, in trying to bring us to a, a place where we uh, would be able to uh, agree on what you're bringing to us. So uh, thank you for your involvement uh, and thank you to the business owner for his dedication to Weathersfield all these years. Can I, can I just ask a couple questions more? I'm sorry, just I'm trying to get a little information. So back to the roof. So it's metal ridged kind of corrugated roof and it shows in your pictures as a stripe. Is that intentional in what your design is or will it be a solid color? It's intentional for aesthetics, but we're not committed to that. Okay. And we just thought it would be pretty that way. Mm -hmm. Okay. So and and it, it shows- um, it you know how it picks up on the beige tones that's with the windows. You know, so you know how the building is green. Yeah. Right. Those are on that cream. It was to pick up on the cream from there. Okay. But it, um, it, it kind of all of it cream. It kind of looked so. I mean, before we decided this is what we were going to present, 
we went through a lot of different imaginations of it. And when you did the whole roof, just that cream, <laughs> it just, it, it, it was too much. Like, yeah, it was yeah like, but you could always just pull the roof color, but, but regardless. Yeah. So the roof color is not anything that we're committed to. What we're trying to do is pull the cream from the trim that's around the windows. But when we put that as the whole roof, it was just too much. So then we kind of striped it with a little darker version. But that, so that product can be painted any color. Okay. Now the railing, is this, are you proposing it, the existing railing that's around the patio? Or is that going to be new railing that matches up with all the framing? That would have to be new railing because it would be, have to accommodate the pull down of the plastic. So if you've been to probably around here at Burton's, you know how you can pull down and kind of secure a bit so that if it gets a little windy or cold, you can bring that down. So those railings are more just not what it would actually be. They would be not the existing ones. They would have to be new so that we could bring down the plastics. And what's the structure made of? Is it metal? Is it wood? Is it what? Tell us about that material. So the roof would be metal mm -hmm. and the ascent, like the essential, the down spouts, the to anchor would be metal. And then the rest, we would use wood as much as possible because of the aesthetics of, and the, you know, the, the aesthetics of wood would definitely be better but they would be more just aesthetics than function because you need to obviously anchor everything. Okay, so let me just- start. If you're looking at like page one, what would absolutely have to be a metal and we could cover it to make it look more not like metal would be those front four, the ones you see that are more prominent. The, the ones at the bottom, the railings could be any product. But we would have to remove everything from what is existing there. Okay. Um, I might have an I might have an easier time embracing just the gray um, uh, because it, the lighter color, like you said about the roof, I, I think it attracts quite a bit of attention to it, and the gray may actually uh, be a little less visible, uh, especially once. Uh, do the covers come off in the middle of the winter or do you leave that up all year? Doug, they're metal. They're metal. The roof, metal. Oh, the roof is not, what I'm looking at is not a uh, something on top of the roof. That's the, the painted roof. The stripes are the painted roof. It's metal. Yes. It's a corrugated metal roof that's attached to the structure. Right, I understand that. I okay. thought that there was a liner on top of it or something no. to give it that look. Yeah, that yeah, liner. Got it. Yeah, it's fabricated I'd, with a color. I'd be curious in, to know what it looks like unfinished uh, or, um, as I said, because I think that you might lose it a little bit more if it were kind of like galvanized gray. I don't know, uh, but that's my thought. We were fine with that. We we worked with that we thought that aesthetically it is sticking up on the like i said the cream color of the windows was the way to go i mean i we can certainly provide different um variations with different colors i mean it probably is either to match like a dark gray it's what's on, existing on the building or to do something like this I mean, when I saw all of the variations, I thought this was aesthetically more pleasing. And like I said, the entire being the cream color just looked too much. That's why we thought putting some stripes on that in kind of the same tone, but we're not committed to the color of the roof at all. I That's think not it's the hill you're gonna die on. <laughs> <laughs> I think it does at this time of year of the drawing with the greenery, you know, because it's the summer and it's a tent, it looks tent-like, but if it's going to be there in the dead of winter, I just think that um, it, it kind of, we have to think about what it's going to look like then. And so it may be that it will look fine then, but 
it's not going to look like this drawing because this drawing is at a different season. Correct. And like I said, we can provide the, and it, it, we, the roof can be painted any, it can be any color. Not Understand. That I'm it for be, um, not that I'm advocating being any color. <laughs> right. No, I'm, and I'm not trying to pick it for you either uh, yes. because you're just here on a uh, conversational basis. Right. But I, I'm just trying to bring up the kinds of things that uh, I think we'll be thinking of uh, eventually uh, and talking about eventually. And one of them will be, how does this look in the off season? Thank you. I'd, I'd like to ask the commissioners to, to, to think about, and I don't know what I think here, but I'm looking at the page. I don't know which page it is. It's page three. It shows um, the west facade view. Um, I think it's, it's pretty clear. Am I right about that? That's the west facade view. It's pretty clear that the, the whole structure is going to project in front of that house. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm, I'm looking at it and I, I see sort of three different roof peaks. I see the peak of the house. I see the peak of the, the entry area, the, the connector. And then I see the peak of the patio, the roof. I don't, it's not a patio, it's not an awning, it's a, it's a metal roof. Um, and I just, I just wonder how much of that we will see, how much of that will be visible, if that's gonna be very distracting and jumbled looking to have all those different roofs not lining up and not being symmetrical and just kind of being defined more by where the patio is than, than how it melds into the house. In other words, they put a patio in and that makes sense, they used all the space. They weren't thinking of that as the, as the base of a structure, but now they're putting a structure over it. Is that the right positioning? Well, certainly the peak of the entranceway is not gonna be visible because that's gonna be obscured by the rest of the structure. Well, it's gonna be see-through though, won't it? I mean, there's no sides to it. Uh, eh. <laughs> I'll bet you not a lot. By the time they're done, <laughs> I'll bet you not a lot. Okay. Can they speak to the elevations of what's the, again, you have two roof lines there and all these different pictures. Looks like sometimes, looks like the panels are in on one on the east elevation in the back. There's more divisions between okay. the if posts. You look at page four, where it talks about the south elevation, where also it doesn't show the roof, it shows. Because of we talk, you, know, you can't do a flat roof, and the reason why that roof is pitched that way, if you look at the south elevation, it shows more significantly from like if you're looking at the building from the side. What the so, so what's the height there from the front? So facing Main Street, your south elevation, your pitch three of five, you know that's the shed that goes up to the larger peak. What what is that elevation? Is that eight feet, ten feet, and then it goes up to? So the highest, and you're almost to the second window. Probably just for an idea. No, it has to, no, for here. So that has to be at least ten. Twelve. Yeah, ten, twelve. So it's going to be twelve feet. So the front of this, where where it's on your south ele south elevation, that's a twelve foot post. Are you looking at the south elevation picture? Yes. Yes, I am. Okay. Which kind of so shows the frame. That's about twelve feet at the highest point. Because. You, you really couldn't bring that down anymore because of the entrance. Right. Right. So, so you got 12 feet there. Now that you have the second roof line, what's the center where a center pole post would go, but it's not going to be I'm one. About the highest. I'm talking 12 feet there. No. 12 feet high in the center. No. Yeah. No. Yeah, because you're almost up to your second story window. You're showing. So. I guess I'm going from you know have you ever have you you've been to Lucky Loose, correct? Yes. Everyone here has been to Lucky Loose. <laughs> well, hallelujah. <laughs> um maybe it's easier. Go to your second page. Second of high it shows the front of the building, west elevation. All right, hold on, west elevation. Okay. So from the patio up to that first line of the roof. From from yeah. I'm looking at that building or at, at this structure from the foundation, from the patio up. 
that first front of the frame, how high is that? About 14 feet. I don't think about 14 feet. So if you're looking at the west elevation, he's saying it's 14 feet from the base to the bottom of the, the window. So the peak of that would be further up. So from here. This is about 16 feet. So it's easier to say you don't know. I'm just guessing, but he knows better. So probably about 15 feet. So where, where's 15 feet? We don't have so, we don't have exact measurements. I mean, we're okay. we're looking conceptually, we so we haven't that. done it. No, but I understand that, but you must have an idea of what you need for clearance. What are you going to have? Is there going to be an over? He'll, he'll address that. Well, so from the height of the, the center of the peak of the of the building, how high you think that roof is? Oh, well, we can start there if you want. If you got that, yep. The highest peak I think is probably going to be at least 12 to 14 feet. At the crown. And then at the lowest, then Lou, how? The lowest, I think it's going to be about eight feet. So your front, so, okay. I think at the front of the, by the fence there, I think it's going to be about yeah. eight. So I just want to kind of get a little more scale. The umbrellas right now are usually about eight foot high. Right off, sure. So I, I would think that, you know, we don't have exact measurements, but I'm thinking no, that's all right. around eight feet probably in the, in the front, and it's going to elevate. And then the center is probably going to be a good 12 to 14 feet. Yeah. Yep. So I'm going to go with my final answer. It was 15 feet. <laughs> You're close. But it, it quickly, if you look at the west elevation, though, it quickly drops. So, I mean, we're kind of looking for more of the aesthetics than the, the nuts and bolts. Um, one of the things that when we drafted this was the size of the patio and what the pitch needed to be for snow. Yep. Why did you go with a permanent structure over a temporary type awning or tent or some, what, what was your thought but, process but there? If I can interject a couple things, I want to go back to addressing Mr. Vasek's comment about coming over the fence, over the front of the property line. As you know, I've been there for 11 years and I've seen these umbrellas just take off like a helicopter and take off and really almost hit people. I've seen tables being flipped over. If you go by there right now, there's about four tables that have been flipped over because it's like a, a, a valley of wind that gathers in that area and takes things with it. If I just cover the center and have to put umbrellas in front, I don't think I'm achieving what I wanted to achieve. We get people in the middle of a summer, rain just comes out of nowhere, getting up, running into this restaurant holding their plates. It's really, um, can we eliminate going too far out onto the grass? Probably can, but I think we have to go. Unfortunately, if I'm looking at the building, the patio fence kind of is only about a foot outside of the front of the building. If it makes any sense, uh, Chris, but I'm saying just a very sec. I guess it... My thoughts on this are in two entirely different directions because I think you're making a permanent solution to a temporary problem of creating a longer season for your outdoor seating. Yes or no? It's not but it's but not that and let me finish my point because you are what you essentially seem to want is a permanent structure that's year round to extend how many tables you can have. So yes, you're, you're really doing away with the outdoor patio theme altogether, which really would lead me towards proposing a real building addition as opposed to an industrial looking tent that's gonna be permanent. So if we're looking to have a patio feel for the restaurant, something less permanent makes sense. If you're looking to have year round seating outdoors, it's not outdoors anymore with a permanent metal structure over it. You're not, it's not patio seating anymore. So that speaks to really having a real addition instead. And mm -hmm. so I, for me, this in-between thing where we have a permanent metal structure, I feel like it's gonna look like our outbuildings at the transfer station next to this beautiful home oh, and restaurant. I'm not trying to um, take away from the beauty of the building, but 
this summer we were lucky that we had a pretty decent summer. I had to I had to close the restaurant about a half a dozen times during the summer because of rain, because nobody wanted to eat inside. Say we, we, we're rid of COVID and now we have a summertime. Average summertime, we literally lose probably 25% of our sales because rain. And it always rains on a Friday night or a Saturday night. Never rains on a Monday when we're closed. <laughs> saying all that, saying all that, we to get a tent over that patio, it's not one, good. it's not going to be economic for ourselves. And two, we have to put it up, take it down. And we were told we can only keep it up to 480 days. That would be a taking tents up and down, ruin the fabric. It's not really something that I want to go for. Something more permanent. Yes, we don't want to close it in. And no, I, I, I'm not going to have heat out there or air conditioning out there. And the reason why we have sides here to come down are just to prevent when it is windy or raining. That's all, that's it. Most of the time the sides will be up. It'll be just, um, I think pretty open air so you can see through it. I'm not gonna make it so it's so low and dark, et cetera. Yes, I understand looking at the sky is beautiful, but on a uh, business-wise, um, the rain, cost us a lot of money as, as much as it's going to cost us to put this up we're just trying to add to the beauty of the building yes our patio is famous our patio brings a lot of people but also our patio has its limits based on how the rain is going to come like i said on a friday night at seven o'clock or saturday night it really does i, I understand that lou I, I just have one thing i wanted to say which is you do realize that the 180 day limit just means 180 days without coming to us. If you come to us, we can approve the uh, structure to be up longer than 180 days. I, that still may not resolve the problem but economically. The, but, no. but the reality is this, that- It's a big tent. It's, it's a, a big tent that is, is I mean, I, don't I think it. we've all been to, you know, the Andrea in Rhode Island. That is not an attractive, like, I feel like that is an, a lot, it would be about the same size as the Andrea. And they take it down every year after the season. I don't see that as an attractive thing for that property. And I guess, maybe, I guess maybe what we're saying is um, the size is too big. The size of the, the, the roof, you mean covering the patio? Well. The whole massing. The, the whole the massing. Every commissioner has spoken to the fact. I understand you're trying to maximize your business. That doesn't. I, that doesn't course. mean that it's the appropriate look for the district. I think we're, we're, we we have seen something like. Yeah. So really if you're looking at the patio plan, which is the last page, basically having that part in the front that those three squares excluded, something like that. Is that where you I don't, for me honestly that's not even enough i don't know what other people think uh this is commissioner raymond i haven't had a chance to speak yet tonight but uh i wanted to weigh in my my i would rather see a a three season um temporary uh sort of more of a tent than i would prefer i would prefer than than a permanent structure i just that uh, yeah that's for me it's it's a, a solid structure there just doesn't say patio, it says it says addition. So that's my two cents. Thank you. The, the only way you could you, you could eliminate that you put up the infrastructure and have a roof that retracts if you wanted to retract it like an awning. And but that you know I I don't know how safe that is. I don't know. I don't know. I'm thinking something, you know, hey. I don't want to be stuck in some liability that, you know. Um, a tent wind takes it. I, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I mean, I'm not too. I'm not too uh, big on tents. I'm not. What we're trying those. to do though is, if you have a retractable, anything retractable, it has to come all the way across the property. Where we're trying to, if you look at the patio plan, which is the last page, not have the walkway fully covered. There's no way to have a retractable other than to extend it all the way from the property. 
and I've been to the river and I understand their, what they did, which was, first of all, it extends probably about 20 feet from the prop, from all the way across from the property, but this property doesn't lend itself to something like that. Absolutely. You're, you're absolutely correct. I couldn't agree with you more. It doesn't, it doesn't at all. So, and I, I understand what your, you know, it's kind of like, I understand what your kind of job is, although not a paid job, I understand, but you know, the reality and the limitations of the property are there and we can't do what they did at the river because it, the property doesn't facilitate that. So we have what we have. We want to be successful in that, in that area. I think we've been a, a, a value added to the area and we're trying to do something that is aesthetically pleasing, but it has to, some of the, you know, the ideas that have been put forth would be, I have to say less expensive, but in, in a weird way, safe. not as safe. safe or aesthetically pleasing. I looked into one of these things, yeah. one of the issues that hasn't really brought, been brought up, and I obviously frequent the restaurant, is there's also the, it's a beautiful sunny day, but you're chasing around the sun because nobody wants to sit in the sun in full sun. Yeah. And you have all of those limitations. And I get it. Everybody wants to sit outside, but you want it to be perfect. So I guess I'm, I'm a little, I thought that this was a good start. I understand the concerns that this is more of a permanent structure where if you put up a tent and took down a tent, but I've been to the entry in Rhode Island. I don't think that's an aesthetic that is attractive. So I, I, I just, go ahead, Luke. In the beginning of the summer, when COVID started and things like that, we were allowed to open up, I looked into getting a tent to cover that patio, cover a percentage of the patio. And all they kept coming up with, we, we hold no liability how safe the size of this tent can be. The bigger tent you go, the more liability is that the structural is not going to hold as well if it gets windy. Everybody came out and seen the area because we're in like a little channel between two buildings. Nobody would take the whole responsibility for what would happen to this tent. And I wasn't going to take that kind of risk of having something fall on customers. And this is why I'm getting tired of these umbrellas being elevated by the wind and taken off like helicopters. Because, uh, it, because of the patio, we can't put anything in the middle. So it has to only right. be anchored on the sides. So it's a, you, it, it's a different animal for it to be that large. That size, size of the pattern. Well, I, I think, I think the, the safety issue is a bit of a red herring because there are certainly ways you can post it with the patio, take up bricks, put in the posts that you need. Um, it, my daughter's college had a massive tent that was temporary that they would put up over an ice rink, temporary ice rink in the middle of a green for three months every year. And the walls were probably 20 feet high and it was still a temporary structure. So I think the um, safety issue on a tent, wait, and, and frankly, the safety, I'm not done, the safety issue on the umbrellas is really a misnomer. If you weight them properly, they don't fly away. If you put them down when it's windy, they don't fly away. We're concerned with the appearance. And I think what you've heard from everyone tonight is it's too big for a permanent structure that's not an actual addition. And so I, I, I don't wanna, I don't think everyone has spoken, but my, what, I, what I'm hearing so far is that the, the, the direction we seem to be in is if you want a permanent structure, then don't propose a, a permanent metal tent, propose an addition. If you want something that's tent-like that looks open, that gives you the functionality of a tent, propose a tent and make or, it in a reduce, size. The, the, reduce your footprint. I mean, when you look at the exactly. first page, you know, the patio footprint is actually bigger than the footprint of the house, which is fine when it's a patio, but when you start to put 
a, a permanent roof on it, a metal roof on it, it does, it gets to be really big. And I, so, you know, I don't, I don't want to give you the idea that we don't appreciate your business in town. We certainly do. It's really been a, a draw for Old Weathersfield. Um, the patio at Lucky Lose is well known as a destination spot for people. Um, but it is the patio in the warm weather that is that destination spot, which you will be losing the essential character of with a metal structure built over it. Um, I, you know, how long have you had that patio there? Cause I know you were there for a number of years before you had the full patio seating. I've had it for about eight years, yeah. Eight, eight to nine years now. This, this I was on HCC when it was approved. It's about eight to nine years. And, and you know, so you did, you did run a restaurant without the patio at all, and many other restaurants were run there without the patio at all. And they, actually, did, no, and they did no business. We, so, we, our draw actually, to clarify, though, um, you did half the patio <clears throat> no and then the other half. So I'll have to look. I can get those details, but um, it was half the patio and then it was extended. We extended it, yeah. I think that through most of the operation, there's been patio seating, and that's uh, in some ways helped to kick off the prosperity of, of um, Old Weathersfield was the success of that. I agree. And I think that's what Commissioner Wolf is kind of, and, and I, um, I don't want to speak for her, but I think that to a certain extent, uh, I mean, I grew up in the golf business and I know exactly what Lou was talking about with the weather. It's just, it's uh, the vagaries of it are very difficult. Um, but, and, and I like how this roof is low slung. And I think what you keep trying to tell us is that if it were a real tent, it would be higher maybe. I'm not sure if that's the case or not, but I do think that there are some solutions that um, you might want to try before you go to this extent uh, like asking for an approval for longer than six months of a tent that uh, is less of an investment to begin with, but maybe works uh, and still provides some upward view. Um, on the other hand, maybe this is what you really want to stay with. And, and if you want to do that and want to come to us with it, you know, well, I'll look at it with an open mind. Um, but all the things you've heard today are kind of like the pros and cons uh, for for something that at its best, I think would be great in season, uh, but we all have to think about what it might look like in uh, January. I think that the fact that it might still attract people in December has its own attraction because I think Lou is right that the thing that's going to outlive the pandemic is the desire of people or the willingness of people to eat outside uh, so I agree that exploring something here uh, makes sense for you. Um, I guess that when it's all said and done, though, is it's still really a nine-month versus a year-round uh, uh, structure because the winter will yeah. always be somewhat quieter here after the new year. Well, we're still talking probably about nine months anyway. We're talking about is if you have the random rain when it's August, September, sure. everybody's not freaking running into the, into the into the restaurant and you're trying to find what table went where, <laughs> or if it's screeching hot, nobody, especially, you know, like I don't want to sit outside because I'm sweating. So it's about all of that. We're not talking about having it be 12 months patio it's not going to be that right understand there. in there you know right so it we're talking about the enjoyment of the months you can enjoy and we're in new england so sometimes that's nine sometimes that's eight but that yeah. we have to kind of deal with that so what we're trying to do is make it an enjoyable so we're not going to put heating in there but you know, put some fans so that it does air circulation, something like that. We're trying to make it a pleasant experience for the diner, make it aesthetically pleasing to the area. We're certainly about that. And we're just, like I said, I don't, I, I don't see, and I understand the concept of, is it 
are we really talking about an addition? No, we're not. We're not talking about 12 months out of the year. We're talking about adding to the enjoyment of the diner probably eight to nine months out of the year because the, the three months, December, January, February are in New England are not going to be a thing. If I can say one thing. The, if I did not have that patio, not to put my business out there, but I probably wouldn't be in Wethersfield alive and successful. The, the, the five months, because I don't know where this nine months is coming from. It's about five months, maybe six months, we get business outside. Especially this year, my business went from very successful during the summertime to it fell off a cliff. Because of COVID. Because of COVID. And when I say fell off a cliff, fell off a cliff, 90% of my sales. Well, you're 50%. So basically, I'm not doing this to extend, because when it's cold out, nobody wants to sit out anyway. But what happens is when it does rain or it decides to rain, I don't have to literally, you know, lose 60, 70% of my business and uh, reservations. I can, I can keep people out there if it's raining or if it's misting or if it's going to pour in the middle of have them having their dinner. They're going to be covered. Um, that's all I try to preserve. As you know, every year we close in January anyway, because it becomes a ghost town. Nobody go out to dinner. It's cold, snowy, and icy, and people go down south or wherever they go. So we just we're just trying to extend our summertime that we can't stay open, even if it's raining and we have reservations coming in. They're not going to cancel because we are covered. I think. A permanent fixture works for us, and I would make it attractive so it fits into the historic town of Westfield, and it's a complement to the building. As the patio became a complement to the building, it's owned by the town. It's a town asset. I just pretty much use it. I lay down the brickwork, and I use it. If I ever was to leave Westfield, I can never take the patio with me. If I put a permanent structure on there, I can't take that with me either. So I just feel that safety-wise, Aesthetic-wise, I would make it look like it was always there. Like this in towns and uh, there's some local barns in town that are beautiful. Uh, like like the lady said earlier, years and years ago, they didn't do driveways, they didn't do barns, they didn't do garages. And you're right, they probably never had patios. But I think we can bring it together in 2021, where we can make the patio look like it's a complement to the beautiful building that I'm in. But just one last thing. I know I said before gray should be considered, maybe it still should, but I will say to your credit that um, cream color or yellowish color that is on the trim of the Deming Standish house, I yes. believe is also on the Hurlbut Dunham house next door. And so to a certain extent that merits toward your design because the color may work with both buildings, but it's important to remember for the record we're talking about a structure that's still going to be awfully close to the other museum house that's right next to it as well. So there is a lot to think about. It would be great if what you're trying to do is maximize your six or seven months of outdoor dining anyway, that you okay. could just have a tent that came and went during those six or seven months to give you the surety you need during that time. And then if it works, come back and say, yes, let's build this structure that's going to be with us forever. Um, on the other hand, I realize that you may, you may think that the most uh, le least imposing design may be one that's a permanent pavilion rather than a temporary. Thank you. Thank you I'll just say, Luke, too, to follow up and, you know, being a member of the Economic Development Commission when we you got a steep grant to expand that uh, patio. I was very happy to be part of that and, and, and you know, make it what it was for you and, and obviously your service and, and the food and, and the events you have on that patio. I, hopefully you take out from this tonight that, you know, I, I was completely, I did not know this was going to be a permanent structure. I, I thought it was going to be some type of canvas structure. I, I in favor of some, something out there for you. Um, but again, maybe back to the drawing board, looking at some options and in, in, as my opinion, as a commissioner. I appreciate everybody's feedback. Um, so that's why we wanted to do this on an informal basis. And you guys have had a long evening. So I will take 
everybody's comments and we will see you again next year. Thank you. Thank you so thank much. You. Very much. Thank you very much for coming in. Thank and you. Thank you so Have much, Luke. Holiday. We appreciate you coming in um, to speak with us. There's one question, Jen, I guess. Jennifer, if I can ask one question, uh, members. So if I, for the beginning of the year, say uh, we open up, uh, we, we're closed now, but we, we're anticipating opening up in February, if it all looks well, or maybe March. Um, if we go ahead and hire for a tent to be installed out there, you know, a nice tent, nothing to look very generic and, you know, but we have to come back, of course, to the to your department and apply for a tent permission or so or if, if you're going to be out there, if it's going to be a tent that's up longer than 180 days, you would have to come to us. How about the governor, how he's waived? Oh. All, um, he hasn't waived the right things. <laughs> so do we, because he had waived that you could put up a, pretty much a, uh, a tent on a driveway and get a restaurant, uh, a patio that uh, we still have to go through the process of coming to the town and applying well so it. so far the governor's order is only extended until february actually so i can't really speak to that because i don't know what will be in place after that date you know we're we're out to mid-february with the governor's um uh, i think restrictions being waived on those issues we don't know what it's going to be in the upcoming months so if i can't, I, can't if really them, I come in and i apply if it's going to be longer than 10, right? If it's going to be longer than the 180 days. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Six months. You wouldn't even have to come see us if it's less. Yeah. Right. Okay. So it's longer than 180 days and the governor has an extent. I mean, everybody, 2021 is still going to be a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> okay. right. Still going to be a lot of fun. So if we put it up for 180 right. days. Thanks very much for your time and your effort. Thank you. Have a nice holiday, everyone. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. You too. Bye. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So it, okay, report of the Historic District Commissioner. Do you have anything for us, Kim? I do not. Thank you. Uh, any, and no, no correspondence? None. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. I'll make that motion with the uh, uh, proviso that I want to wish everyone the best of the rest of 2020 and a happy 2021 to come. Thanks, everyone. Is there Absolutely. someone to second? Sure. Thank second. you, Vasek. Vasek, all in favor, aye. Aye. Okay. Aye. Bye, y'all. Merry, Merry Christmas. We'll see Merry you again. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Bye. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for a wonderful year, even in the midst of a difficult one. At least we're seeing each other. So nice. Thank Absolutely. you. Thanks. Thank you for everything today, Jen. Thank you, Kim, too. I appreciate your help. Yeah, we're going to figure it out. I don't know what the deal I, is. I think the best way of just doing it is, is attaching a link so that you can get to the website easy. That works. So does just doing it on Google Docs and sharing it. My Google Docs doesn't always connect well, which I don't know why. It just doesn't. I don't. They don't attach well for some reason. I don't know if there's a... Oh. Okay. Privacy thing that is attached to the town, but it just doesn't always work. Kathleen, were you voting tonight? You're not voting, right? I didn't vote tonight. Okay, sorry. I meant to make a Mark Raymond. Hey. Thanks for letting us see you. <laughs> <laughs> Good night. Thank you, everyone. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to everybody. Bye.